for at your life we can start uh so we are live on both platforms so we can thus begin uh so hi uh, i know it's pretty late here in india uh but then i hope this is worth it so i am mohit and on behalf of the gnu linux users group we welcome all of you to the first dev talk of 10 days of code the inaugural edition of 10 days of code an initiative by our club to ensure that more and more people take up coding during this pandemic and create a greater impact towards society So on this special occasion, we have with us Mr. Igor, an alumnus of Saint Petersburg University, Russia. Well, I hope all of you have heard the name of this university. Igor was one of not one of those born coding prodigies, as he previously worked as an auto mechanic in Russia, then moved to South Korea, and then finally works in Silicon Valley, the United States. Again, a place you might have heard of, right? Igor has worked for huge tech giants. like netflix google and motorola among others he is currently an engineering manager at facebook california igor will speak to us about a very pressing issue something which we as a club also would like to induce in the hearts and minds of each one of you upcoming changes and the growing importance of technology during the pandemic a pandemic which has taken over our lives in such a way that we still do not know how to move out of it we hope that technology is the way out of this technology helps us lead a normal life again thank you so much igor for accepting our invitation over to you thank you very much for the introduction mohit and it's an honor for me to be in this event and i hope i will uh, help inspire some people to, to look forward in this kind of troubled world and definitely technology helps a lot to make it less troubled and uh, more improve like communication with everyone make it even a, a, a little bit smaller i would say Should I start now? Yes, yes, sir. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah. My name is Igor. Um, as Mohit already introduced me, let me start from disclaimer. Um, first of all, this talk is just my personal thoughts. It, it, nothing should be um, affiliated with my past or current company. Um, and the second one, like, this is just for education purposes only. Hopefully, no one will ever try to monetize this. And with this, I will start. So. Liman asked me to speak about upcoming changes and the growing importance of technology amid the global pandemic. I feel it's a little bit like long um, topic, so let me make it a little bit more simple. Um, pandemic and us. So I hope we will cover most of things that Liman expected me to cover, and let's just think about who we are and how it will affect all of us. Overall, I would start with what actually shapes us in this world, right? Like there are genes, parents, uh, friends, colleagues, and everything changes like even our genes are different at, towards the end of this our life compared to the beginning and usually there are big events who shape us they're not always pleasant and for example in my personal life if i think about like friends or colleagues like the first that comes into my my, my mind was when i was switching schools uh, the boys made celebration that i was leaving their school they were really happy that i'm leaving and it was very tragic event that time for me it was very sad event i thought i had some kind of friends or something and uh that definitely was not the um, pleasant experience I wanted to have in my life but I had and it actually it taught me a lot I felt it taught me mostly about independence from other people opinions from what they think about me and just the focus of my on my own feelings and I was in a, quite a few schools my first school was Indian actually so namaste ji mera naam igar hai that school actually taught me a lot about like the culture of other countries especially about india i read a lot of stories a lot of like your know, like ancient stories like rama all this um culture like mahatma gandhi um well, all the leaders who are like strong uh, icons for me as well when i was young um and uh, schools uh, taught a lot but also if i think about like what schools what shaped me in schools it was also pretty big events and for example in my uh, last school i remember Uh, there was a russian literature teacher who didn't like my ss uh my say they she really like put like c or d score and i felt kind of very sad and my mom was actually even concerned at oh i thought you are pretty good in literature like what's going on so she actually brought my ss to uh, the university teacher of russian literature and she told she's pretty good like don't worry about this and it also was good lear learning for myself like even though i was 
getting maybe the, one of the worst grades in the, in the class in Russian literature. Uh, this authority who was our Russian literature teacher was probably not confident enough to evaluate me. And I should focus on growing on myself. That was another lesson, like just grow myself. Don't compete with other people. Compete with yourself. This is very important. And just try to write better than you wrote last day. Not necessarily think about which grades you will receive or how good you're comparing to other people. Uh, and then um, in mass media, like I was actually a big um, reader of like news. I watched a lot of TV news in the past. Uh, then internet emerged and I was looking into news from internet. And there was also a very big event that um, comes to my mind is uh, me and my friend in 2006, we were very young. We wanted to travel around the world. So we got uh, as much money as we, we had this time. And we actually decided to spend our trip to Czech Republic. Um, it was a big event for us and we were looking forward and then all Russian like central TV channels were showing like there is a flood in the capital of Czech Republic in Prague. So we were very concerned and kind of upset like, oh, wow, we're going there and then there's like water everywhere. What should we do? Will we lose all, all of our money we spent? But I remember we decided, okay, we should try. We, we, we spent our money. We should go there. So I remember we went to the bus with our guides to Czech Republic and we all like there are tons of people who were concerned and like, where are we going? Will we use boats there? And guess what was the reply of the guide? She actually told, don't worry. I called the person who actually lives in Prague. There is nothing there, completely nothing. So it ended up that Russian um, central TV channels were showing big European floods from 2002. So like four years old videos were showing on central TV channels, news channels, internet. And I think that time was actually, uh, that, that I realized that a lot of things that going on in our news is like, it's all about brainwash. It's not about like truths. I can't get much information from uh, the news and from TV. And I should learn more about like books or speaking with people. Um, but that was sad at the time. <laughs> it was a lot of stress preparing to that event. And then in jobs, like there were a lot of jobs, uh, as uh, Mahit mentioned. But uh, I remember South Korea taught me a lot of things. I experienced in subsonic electronics in South Korea. Um, by that time, it was already my third company in software engineering space. So I felt pretty confident. And I remember I really liked one project. I wanted to do this project. I thought it's interesting. So I came to my boss and asked, like, can I get this, this project? I think this is very interesting for me. And now I'm kind of, um, I, I even like that he was pretty direct to me. But at that time, it was also pretty big um, disappointment. When my boss, my Korean boss, directly told me, you know, Igor, um, unfortunately, that project is very important for the company and you're a foreigner and we can't trust foreigners. Unfortunately, uh, this is too important for foreigners to go over. And that time I was thinking, wow, <laughs> definitely I had much more equality working in Russia. And I was already thinking maybe in Russia, building career was not as bad. And I was complaining to this manager that like, why is it like this in Korea? Like, why is it like this in Samsung Electronics? You think you are like an international company, but think, look at the American companies. It's all about the quality, all about like move uh, smart uh, and all this stuff. And um, I remember the boss told like, I was in America and it, it's all the same. Um, I worked in American companies and all the same. And that was the point in my life. And I realized I don't trust him. I want to go and check. So I set goal to myself to actually go to America and to see by my own eyes, because I couldn't believe that it will be the same amount of like kind of inequality and poor management as I saw in Samsung. And I remember I spent two years like preparing for interviews, then um, applying to companies. It was a tons of rejections. Like I think for 100 probably um, requests to interview me on, on approaches the company i got only one response to actually okay go to for interview and then most of uh, these uh, interviews ended up oh sorry we can't sponsor your h1b visa so it was a very tough uh, journey um, but at least i got a goal from this kind of uh, from my Korean manager and hobbies um, i think uh, hobbies most of my hobbies are actually sports and they taught me about uh, perseverance uh, it's the only way to achieve something in sports is like to push yourself hard and harder you push more success you get and it never comes easier that also i think was good lesson for for myself and i'm curious also to know about you like um throw some words maybe in uh, comments if you're watching maybe like Lim liman can uh, deliver some of uh, the words what describes you what things you believe your generation i'm very very curious to know about this 
if you think about myself, uh, if you describe myself, I think the first that comes to my mind, I'm citizen of the world. I don't know what patriotism means. I don't know what is my country. I lived in a few countries. I traveled in 50 plus countries. Um, and I think the world is just like uh, one world, like we share one planet. So I, I don't believe much in like, um, um, affiliating myself with particular country. And I'm pretty independent, as I already mentioned. Like I don't give much attention to what other people think about me. Um, except maybe people that I really respect or close, close to me people. And I'm driven people, some of my driven person, some of my friends will probably say I'm stubborn. I think it goes back to back. Uh, you need to be stubborn to achieve goals, especially if people around you don't believe that you can do this. And yeah, definitely sports. Uh, sports taught me a lot in this world. And the humor, that's probably also important piece of me. I think it's very hard to keep sanity, especially in this world, especially in 2020, if we take our life too seriously. And I, um, I, you can think like California, and I thought like California is a pretty safe uh, spot, but think about this year, it was like a pandemic, then we all went to lockdown, then there are like wildfires started, then uh, there is like firestorm started, then some, another pandemic, small pandemic in Tahoe started, then all our sky became orange, and then we took the first spot in the world in the worst uh, air quality in the world. So even like California was insane this, this year. And I think uh, only taking this life with some sense of humor um, ha helps to, to keep yourself kind of positive. As my actually Indian colleague recently told, the goal of this year is just survive. If you survive, 2020 was good enough for you. Uh, so I think this is a very good approach. And the things I believe, I the first, the very important thing that I do truly believe is we are all different. We come from different backgrounds, different cultures, um, different. Uh, we have different genes and everything, but we should be equal. I think this is the uh, thing that will benefit everyone if we provide equal opportunities to people. And I also believe in love, not just love to your significant others, to people, the close ones, but just love to people. Like this is the, I think, main response to this kind of troubled world and world problems if we treat each other with some love and when i came to america california especially silicon valley it's all about like making a positive impact so i also got this sense that yeah we should all try to make a positive impact and um it's actually african-american uh, baseball player who changed the whole perception of uh, african-americans in baseball jackie robinson he told life isn't significant except its impact on other lives so if you think like, like we will all die one day, right? And all money, all, not, all our achievements will disappear without death. It's only impact we did on other people will stay after, after us. And hopefully it will be mostly positive impact. Let's think about trends. So trends we already had in this world first is globalization. And I know there are pro and cons, but the fact that because of globalization, 30, uh, like billions of people um, went out of poverty within the last 30 years, this is, I think, very good achievements. And I do believe that we shouldn't compete as a country. It's like we share the same planet. It's kind of stupid to compete if you are in one boat, right? You can easily um, break this boat and we have enough like power to destroy our planet easily. So yeah, I, I think I, I'm kind of a supporter of globalization and digitalization goes also back to back. It helps a lot, especially through internet. Now we can communicate with the whole world without much of boundaries. And that was a trend that we already had. And in addition to this remote work, there was already companies, especially in Silicon Valley that told like remote first, like Stack Overflow, they told remote work is first, uh, it's our future and all this stuff. Um, and the uh, fall of brick and mortar stores was also very strong trends. We had quite a few bankruptcies last, especially last years. Uh, the biggest like toy shop in the world, like Toys R Us, uh, Sears is like dying last 20 years. It was the uh, biggest American, American company in the 70s. If you heard about like Sears Tower, it was the tallest tower from 1973 until for 25 years. It was taller than a uh, World Trade Center in New York. And now it's called like Willis Tower and yeah, people not, don't know much about Sears anymore, but it was like, it's big symbol of, uh, up, up, outgoing era, like era of big uh, brick and mortar stores. And then space projects. It's not just like SpaceX who just launched the, um, the, the reusable rocket. It was also like Blue Origin, for example, actually launched first re reusable rocket. 
but they not just wanted to fly there. They wanted to do colonization, colonization of the planets around, right? The projects were there. Um, and with all this pandemic, they were just kind of accelerating the trends, I would say. Uh, but some trends are new. We will never expect that it will be hard for us to actually communicate with people who live like two blocks far from us, right? It's hard to communicate with friends, with our colleagues, and definitely um, impact of this pandemic uh, went uh, not just by accelerating the current trends, there were like new things that we didn't think about this. And for example, healthcare system, it was definitely not ready for this pandemic. Um, in most of countries, it was completely not ready, especially in America. And um, this was the problem that arose um, in addition to education, kids, collaboration, uh, collaboration between people. And the last thing is entertainment and services. Like um, a lot of entertainment and services, there were trends to go in online, making um, kind of remote presence there, but it was not as fast as uh, it probably needed to go. And overall, if you think about uh, this big event like pandemic, where it caused like troubles to the whole world, uh, tons of problems arose and all this stuff. It's like very huge severity of this event, right? Like uh, a lot of people died, a lot of people uh, became sick and it's impossible to predict this event. So like high severity, very low predictability. This is uh, what Talib Naseb uh, calls like black swan event. And this pandemic, um, Talib Naseb actually thinks is not um, actually black swan for everyone. For example, in his book, The Black Swan, he was predicting something like this. And uh, Singapore government was uh, approached him a few years ago and they actually discussed how to uh, kind of fight this uh, future pandemic that was, they both thought it's inevitable. And you can see like now Singapore is dealing pretty well with this kind of virus. But overall, for most of the world and most of people, I think it's definitely black swan events. Uh, we couldn't predict this and it has huge impact on our lives. Even for me personally, it was definitely the worst and the toughest year I ever had in my life. Um, and what Black Swan events usually do, they usually destroy fragile and even robust systems. Uh, so Talib Naseb in his other book, Anti-Fragile, calls that there is fragile systems, there are robust systems, but this is also anti-fragile, which is the opposite of fragile. It means that uh, the problems uh, that, brings, that are brought to the system make the system stronger. And if you think about nature, it's kind of common in nature. For example, our immune system, it's anti-fragile. Right? More bacteria, more viruses we get, stronger we become. It grows the opposite uh, defense system, right? And if you think about uh, market economy, for example, when there you don't have much government support, it's uh, very volatile, it's very random, but it's also anti-fragile. Tons of companies die, tons of companies go bankrupt, but overall the system itself is anti-fragile new companies emerge and take over businesses. And as the father of modern economy, Peter Drucker told, every single social and global issue of our day is a business opportunity in disguise. So it's new opportunities, new problems, new opportunities. And it was actually not only problems, uh, some people and some industries were happy to this virus, right? Uh, of course, first that comes into our mind is like probably game, gamers and people who enjoy like online presence. Um, but um, also retailers, for example, every every retailer that already made this kind of gap from brick and mortar into um, internet online presence, they benefited a lot. Um, and you can see like Amazon, Wayfair, they all like went three three x this, this during this like last six uh, seven months. And it doesn't mean that uh, it became bubble. It just means that growth was accelerated by this pandemic. And if overall, if you just look into the um, U.S. economy, um, S&P 500, basically the overall evaluation of uh, 500 top American companies is actually stable. Now it's the same um, um, evaluation as it was before the pandemic. So it means that uh, the um, companies, they just uh, redistributed their um, market ownership among us themselves. They didn't go... Many companies went down, but immediately other people, other companies went up and got over these niches. Um, and yeah, you think about social uh, website, dating websites, online news presence, it all went up. Um, and also what's actually interesting, uh, NASDAQ index, which is actually American index of uh, high tech companies, it actually went up. It's like, I think 20% up already compared to the beginning of this pandemic. So immersive technologies, everything related to online, 
it actually grows. It's just uh, people uh, and ev evolution of the company is not what co how much company costs now. It's more about how investors think this company will cost in a few years, right? This is kind of the trend. So pandemic accelerated a lot of trends in a positive way, online marketing, and of course, uh, everything related to automatization and accounting. And many things even from remote work and working from home was not ready for this. And we all, I think, we're expecting positive things, especially me, I was expecting like positive things working from home. But in reality, I was not even able to buy a comfortable chair, like all chairs are gone um, from local stores. So definitely there's a lot of things to improve uh, from this kind of work from home experience and uh, be ready and train myself. For example, I was used to go into a corporate gym. Uh, so I started to now run around my, my, my house because there was like all gyms are closed. So um, yeah, we need some time to adopt, but overall, um, a lot of effects could be like positive uh, if we uh, look look in the long term. For example, uh, work environment. So already like there were trends to make it remote, but now most of companies accelerate these trends like dramatically. Like Twitter told all employees can work remotely forever. Uh, many companies set the goal they will hire like 50% of people remotely in the coming years. Um, and even like business travel, they try to reevaluate the needs of business travel, right? Like why need to do business travel around the world, uh, have all jet lag, all these things, spend corporate money if you can actually do it through uh, online video presence. And definitely we need more technologies to collaborate, um, but it's going. And now this pandemic accelerated all this trend dramatically. And internet infrastructure, uh, it's already like huge investments going to cloud computing, digital processing. Um, internet was kind of anti-fragile system, except maybe everyone heard about this DNS issue we had, except this, it is pretty anti-fragile. Um, it was big uh, hit on the internet usage and it was pretty good to be scaled. And as you know, how people build backend systems, they actually design it that uh, data center could die then other data center should, should scale good enough, create and um, clone like tons of new virtual machines. And this is how anti-fragile systems work. One thing replaces the other thing. Um, so internet infrastructure was a good example of how we can fight with black swans. And online industri industrialization was big already. Uh, people expected like $60 billion uh, telemedicine to be in five years. Now they think it will be two, three X more actually. So um, te telemedicine was actually a good example when progress was there, but it was so slow comparing to the actual people needs. And many um, doctors and hospitals had issues and probably like uh, quite a few people died because we were not ready to scale up our medicine systems. Um, of course, education. Um, now in America, I think most of schools are still online. And it's pro and cost. Of course, it's hard for parents sometimes to be in the same room, work remotely, especially with kids running around. Uh, from other perspective, it actually provides a lot of opportunities, especially what about kids who live in the places where not no good schools, right? Or if parents want to uh, kid to have education from abroad, but doesn't want to send like a five or seven years old kid to, to another country. So it's a lot of opportunities as well. Uh, and um, pleasure time as well. Like there is a lot of uh, things that we can enjoy working, uh, working out, even working out from the home. Like for example, in AR VR technology, there is a lot of now things that you can do like online gym, boxing, just stay in your house with these uh, AR VR headsets. And this is uh, really like new trends, which uh, will be resistant to all future pandemic uh, pandemics. And I think an important effect is also screen time attitude. Usually, uh, especially for parents, we thought, okay, uh, kids should have a limited amount of screen time and they should have more social time. They should have spend time with their friends, their family. Uh, screen time is kind of negative aspect. And this pandemic changes completely. Now social time and screen time come, became almost the same because it, when people went like into lo lockdown mode, there was no way to actually have social time without screen time. And uh, definitely there was opportunities to communicate with like grandparents, uh, friends living outside only through this uh, screen, through video presence. So definitely there will be big paradigm shift uh, about 
what screen time means and how we should think about this. It's definitely not as bad as we thought before. And laws, a lot of laws already changed. Uh, there are some limits, some uh, actually uh, opportunities. Uh, for example, now you can actually um, take a cocktail out of the bar. It was not possible in California before, take cocktail to go. Definitely opportunity to create more cocktails, but there's other much bigger opportunities. For example, everything related to psych psych psychiatric um, medicine. Uh, before you couldn't do all this psychiatric practice um, uh, psychiatry practice through online, through internet, there was a lot of restrictions. But then uh, with this pandemic, the um, American government actually um, gave a lot of opportunities. Now you can uh, treat a lot of uh, psych psych psycho diseases through uh, internet, uh, through like um, video presence, because there is no other way to actually treat people, unfortunately. So definitely a lot of opportunities, but you also should think about um, limits that we get from it, right? And for example, uh, World War II was the um, time when American government decided that they need more money and they actually made income uh, tax law for middle class before middle class was almost not paying income taxes. So this, this law was just intended to support World War II uh, spendings of U.S. And now we see we still pay um, income taxes and uh, laws that come during sometimes kind of... Um, these uh, big events, they stay forever. And um, I know like many governments now, for example, uh, started to push people use special like apps in their phones to track where they go, um, which people they meet. This is really like a sketchy trend, I would say. We sh should be very much aware. I'm happy that in America people kind of know that this is not the right way to do. Like once you lose your privacy, it will be very hard to restore it back. Once government knows all interactions of people, it will be very hard to um, get rid of this. And we should always like think about this. But overall, I think all these changes will bring uh, even more equality in the world. Um, if you now live in India, you don't need to go my road, push hard yourself and um, check your luck to go to US to build an amazing uh, career there. Um, it's actually you can join American company from uh, from your Indian house very easily now. You don't need to leave your parents all the stuff. And before it was probably you have like subsidi subsidiaries right that has special projects for example for your country. Now you can even work in headquarter. We just have started to have uh, teams that located for example in headquarter of Facebook uh, but there is there are remote positions and people from around the world can actually join them and other companies the same so basically more remote opportunities more equality will be in the world where people compete on their merits on their skills on their uh, how smart and how hard working they are not just like where they live right um, so I think this is kind of a very positive effect and Hopefully, it will also make the world a better place as well. And uh, one actually other big trend, people started to wash hands much more. And I actually realized that since February, I was never felt not just sick, but uh, I didn't feel cold or something. I feel much, much healthier since February. And I was traveling, like keeping all the masks, everything. Uh, but I was like washing my hands like maybe four times more often. It, it does help. It does help. I realized like I got a lot of bacteria from my hands in the past. And all people started, like most of people started to wash hands much more. But even if you think about this small thing, like washing hands, what is technology behind this? It's like thousand years old technology, flow of water goes on our hand. A lot of splashes go around. It's very ineffective. Like it's as ineffective as a thousand years old technology could be. So I think it's another opportunity that hopefully will be used by someone that mm, definitely we should be able to wash hands with much more effective, with le less water consumption and with guaranteed results. For example, you like the same as we dry our hands, right? If you push our hands in some machine, it just washes everywhere. We don't need to have these weird movements. It will save much more, a lot of like water and even soil because now Soap is also pretty obsolete technology, how we take it out. So there will be tons of opportunities around. And it just depends on people who see those opportunities and who are like stubborn enough to follow their vision and drive their vision. If someone already fell asleep by this moment, I think it's a good time to wake up. Uh, we will um, discuss a little bit uh, what uh, we went through. 
So overall, this pandemic is a black swan event for most of people and countries and uh, governments. It's impossible to predict. It's very low frequency and it's huge severity and huge impact on the world and people's lives. Um, I will mention all the books in, 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 at the end of the presentation. And also, Black Swan events uh, breaks both robust and fragile systems. So it will be nice to focus on building anti-fragile systems. These systems like Hydro Dragon, which uh, becomes stronger if you cut one head, or like backend infrastructure in the internet, right? Uh, that's what resists uh, big uh, problems in, in this world. And you are the future. In 20, 30 years, you will be people who will be in the head of uh, most influential companies in the world. Um, and it, there will be quite a few Black Swan events going forward. At least every like five to 10 years, there is another Black Swan events. There were wars. Hopefully there will be no wars. There were like financial crises. There were like great depressions. A lot of uh, Black Swan events come and go and they actually shape this world. But they also create a lot of opportunities. And it will be us who will, will be whether led the transformation of our company or just stay and wait until another the Black Swan event come and destroy our company and lead the transformation. During this actually a pandemic, we saw that within days, many companies went fully remote. And then within like weeks, they pivoted their businesses. And within months, they actually reinvented their businesses. So uh, many companies were born the, the kind of the, or reborn during this time. And definitely there will be a lot of new successful companies that will emerge or even like be founded during these uh, tough times. And they will be like one time after every Black Swan event when we will look back and think, oh, that was the time when it all started. And I hope we all will be participants and maybe active drivers of uh, good transformations in technology and in our future companies. And as Tony Robbins tells, the only limit to your impact is your imagination and commitment. So dream wild and commit and be stubborn and uh, achieve things you want. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I, as I mentioned, there are a few books from Nasir Taleb that I think really help to understand these all big events, like the Black Swan and Anti-Fragile. If you want to know a little bit more about, like, I'll just dream or think about what other things will happen in the 21st century, I also recommend the amazing book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval No Harari. And if you want to think about how to build infinite uh, systems and infinite maybe organizations or teams uh, that don't compete with other people or other companies that compete with themselves and just grow strongly independent of circumstances, I really recommend this amazing book by Simon Sinek, The Infinite Game. And also, if you are still interested in uh, perceiving opportunity in uh, Silicon Valley one day, you can watch my previous talk I gave to Raul about uh, how to get jobs in like big companies. It's just introduction, but I think it will get you some idea. There is also like full version. And good luck to you. Um, really looking forward to your generation. And always happy to connect. If you want, uh, write me something on LinkedIn. I'm there. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, Mahid, you are muted now. Um, Mohit, you're on mute. <laughs> okay, so sorry. Yeah, thank you so much, Igor, for your uh, wonderful talk. Like, it was really very insightful on your part to actually break this pandemic into so many parts and show us all the aspects of life and eventually to make us realize that it is not exactly a problem we are in, but an opportunity which we are facing, an opportunity to become better by making use of the circumstances, by actually making use of the time uh, we have been bestowed upon by staying at home and actually exploring a whole new arena. So again, thank you so much, Igor, for this wonderful talk. We would really cherish whatever you said and take it forward. And we really hope that you see some wonderful things coming up from our generation as we take inspiration from people like you. And hopefully one of us, uh, like walking down Silicon Valley one day, we give you a good, nice greeting and remind you about this session which you had taken uh, for the GNU Linux users group, NIT Durgapur in India and inspired us with your words. Thank you so much again for this wonderful session. 
uh, also 10 days of code still continues the participants are still battling it out with their projects and we wish them all the best for the remaining days we'll also have another dev talk on 10th october and we'll be unveiling the speakers soon so stay tuned thank you for coming for this session thank you to all the audiences and it was really great listening to you igor thank you so much That's thank you also Thank yeah. you also, Mohit and Liman, for inviting me. And I also wanted to mention that I saw trends in India. Like India also like is going very good in uh, especially IT and high tech world. So I also hope a lot of great companies will be founded and emerge from India. So good luck with this as well. You don't need to leave your your country. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Igor. Yeah, actually, in India, uh, technology is something which is coming up very fast, and people over here are taking to technical education. we are actually conscious that we should go for sessions like this we should learn from people who have already achieved all this and are ahead in this field so that we can also like catch up soon and give some tough competition so yes uh, we hope that does happen cool looking forward to this yeah sure uh, so yeah thank you so much for audience with this we come to the end of our stream see you soon may the source be with you thank you so much yeah thank you um yeah Ego, you stay here, please. For uh, we'll just uh, hang around for five more minutes. Yeah, uh, Rajesh and Harshit, uh, just a clarification. Yeah, the stream can be stopped right now.